The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. You're watching Cyber Element 14 Cyber Presents. My name is DJ, and now that we live in the year 2021, gone are the days of the regular portable computer, and so begins the age of the cyber deck. So let's cyber get started. Ugh. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In the immortal words of Keanu Reeves, aka Johnny Mnemonic, I need a computer. Now, I don't need just any computer. I need a cyberdeck. And if you don't know what that is, that is perfectly okay because it doesn't make any sense if you haven't read William Gibson's uh, Sprawl Trilogy, which you don't need to read all of them and they're very confusing. But one of the things he introduced was a type of computer that allowed you to connect to cyberspace, the original Matrix. Now, there weren't a lot of details on the actual design of the cyberdecks in his universe. He purposefully left it vague. But uh, over the past few years, a lot of enterprising hackers have, and well, makers, have got it in their head that this is a cool thing to have and we should make them. So I wanted to throw my hat into the ring and make my own cyberdeck, which ultimately is just like a really cool portable computer that doesn't look like a traditional laptop. So how are we gonna do that? Well, since cyberdecks themselves are fairly undefined, that means we need to come up with our own goals and constraints in order to make this possible. For me, my goals are one, it has to be functional, two, it should be unique or weird, and three, it should look cool. So those are what I'm going to achieve with this build. Now, I want it to be functional, which means I'm gonna have to use some real electronics. And how am I gonna break that down? Well, for any electronic project, I like to break it up into four key parts. Control or processing, input, output, and power design. So let's get on to control. Now, there are a plethora of single board computers, nooks, or high-powered microcontrollers that could operate your deck. Who says it has to have a full-fledged operating system? But for me, I want something that I can actually use as like a portable development platform. And that means I'm gonna use my favorite single board computer, you guessed it, the Raspberry Pi 4. And this is going to be the core of my build, which means I've got some easy to use parts that will define a lot of the input and output. Well, let's get to that. Since we're using the Raspberry Pi, that means we have a wide swath of displays that we use for this build. Now, I like things to be tight and compact, and I don't like having HDMI cables or things like that inside a portable project. And that means one of the most compact options is still gonna be the original, official Raspberry Pi display. It's fantastic, capacitive touch, uh, efficient, and it's got nice mounting points on the back, so it's just perfect for integrating into custom cases. And since we're already on the Raspberry Pi fan train, we might as well keep going with the Raspberry Pi camera. And this is really important because I wanna spend more time learning about computer vision and having a built-in camera with this will make that a lot easier. And like Johnny Five, I also need more input, which means I want some buttons that are large and clunky for this build. And I've gone with these latching push buttons and these also are illuminated, which is very important because as all makers know, the more LEDs in your project, the better it is, objectively. And last for output, I'm also gonna be including this 10 watt, four ohm speaker, so that I can listen to all of my favorite synthwave albums on the go. This means I'll also need an amplifier, so I've gone ahead and snagged this one from my parts bin. Now this one has a nice interface for uh, volume control via a simple potentiometer, so I'll stick this in the case as well and give it a nice fatty knob, which will be very satisfying. Lastly, we need to figure out what's going to power everything. We've got the Raspberry Pi 4, the display, the audio system, and any other accessories we want to plug in via USB. Now, that's going to be quite the power budget, which means we can't exactly pop a couple of double A's in there and call it a day. So I'm going to be powering everything with this 26650, uh, 5200 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion battery. That's quite the mouthful. 
And this is fantastic because it can support the high current drain of all the devices and it looks cool, which I think is still important. But of course, the nominal voltage of a lithium polymer battery is about 3.7 volts, which means we'll need to boost that up to five volts to power the Pi and the display. So I'll also use this uh, boost converter, which can supply about 25 watts, which should be plenty for our portable project. And I want to charge this on the go, so I'll also include this lithium ion battery charger. This one isn't quite uh, able to supply the amount of current that would make this fast charging, but I don't mind charging this overnight. I'm not exactly gonna be using this as my daily driver. There are of course gonna be a few other little components that will tie this whole thing together, but I'll talk about those as they come up in the build. For now, we figured out the main components for the design, which means I can get to the thing that I really want to do, which was make a cool case. So let's jump over to the Land Fusion 360. Okay, so here we are in the world of Fusion 360, and this is the 3D model for my Cyberdeck. Now, it is tentatively named the Ono Sendai Cyberspace 3, which uh, is vaguely referring to the Ono Sendai Cyberspace 7 in the books, um, but I'm not really married to that name. I don't know, what do you think I should call this, dear viewer? Please let me know. And let's just go from uh, right to left. Now, I deliberately made the handle offset, which I'm sure will uh, bother quite a few people. It, uh, it does bother me somewhat, but um, it gives it uh, a nice asymmetry, which I, I think lends to the weird aspect of it. Um, we've got our array of tactile switches, so I just went with um, five latching switches because, well, I had exactly five. We've got our display right here in the middle, and over here I've got the speaker. Now I've got a raised grill, and the speaker itself, um, let me turn that off, protrudes, that just gives me a little bit more clearance in the case. Um, I want to get keep things relatively thin um, because uh, I didn't want this to be just, you know, like a lunchbox. And it's only about uh, 50 millimeters thick, which I think is pretty good. And it's uh, 140 millimeters tall by about 330, mil 330 millimeters long, which I think is nice and tidy. Now we've got our potentiometer for the volume knob for the amplifier. This little hole right here is just sort of an expansion port. I'm just going to put like a little plastic cap there. It doesn't do anything right now. Um, but if I want to add more stuff, it's nice having holes that were deliberately cut um, so it looks a little bit tidier. Up top, I've got some uh, banana plugs, uh, or jacks, sorry. So this will allow me to power external devices, so this will be connected to the 5 volt. Um, rail, which I think is just kind of a nice weird little feature, just uh, makes it stand out. It's something you would never see in a normal laptop. Um, but we do have to have normal laptop things like a power switch, so just a regular toggle power switch. I've got an LED indicator um, cover, and we've got the uh, charging port for the USB. And speaking of USB, it's not modeled, but this is also a USB-A connector because I obviously want to um, be able to still uh, reach the USB ports of the Raspberry Pi. Um, you'll notice there is a distinct lack of a keyboard. And I did that on purpose because I didn't want this to be um, just another laptop-y design. And I can still always connect whatever keyboard I want and maybe I'll integrate it so it's like even more clunky and big. Um, I don't think it's necessary to have a QWERTY keyboard. It's certainly not the main user interface of the future, so I'm totally okay with that. And it makes everything a lot simpler and cheaper to build. So the main structure of the case um, comes from two plates. So we've got this face plate here that are about um, 1.6 millimeters thick. And on the back, we've got, uh, I guess we'll, I, I should probably talk about the things inside. Um, so we've got the screen, the Pi mounted to itself, um, a proto board for connecting some smaller components. Um, we've got the battery holder right there, squeezed in at the top. And uh, the screen itself makes a lot of the structure. So let me hide that. So that ties these pieces together. So this is designed to be printed without any supports. 
So this would be the bed surface and this would be the bed surface. And you can print them both like tall prints. So it should print on um, just about any printer that has, you know, what is now fairly common, about 200 millimeters square. Um, so it's, it's fairly easy to replicate, which is why I've got these um, pieces that cover the seams, which don't just aesthetically make it just a little bit more strange, um, but they hold everything in because the plastic will, of course, have a tendency to um, spring out since they're just narrow pieces that aren't otherwise connected. And on the back, we've also got, let me turn it on if I can find it. Ah, a uh, little camera case, a uh, little camera holder, and just a rear faceplate. So trying to keep things simple and clean. Uh, in, any, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a giant uh, point and shoot camera, um, which I kind of like. It's just nice and nice and strange. And we've just got some rubber bumpers here so I can rest it standing up. Although maybe I should have added some on the back. No, I don't think I'll ever lay it down like that. But overall, it's a fairly straightforward and simple design. Um, although I am going to uh, machine this plate uh, and this plate out of aluminum, the case doesn't require that um, for strength. So you could definitely 3D print this plate or cut it out of something else and it wouldn't necessarily matter. Most of the structure comes from the 3D prints themselves and uh, of course the screen, which is fairly rigid. And that's about it, it's fairly straightforward. Let me go ahead and 3D print these parts and cut out these plates and we can start putting things together. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! And here it is. This is the Cyberdeck nearly assembled and ready to go. I assure you it is far more organized um, than it first appears to be. So let me break down how the electronics are all connected and it will make a little bit more sense. So the beginning in my mind of any electrical circuit is of course the power source. So we've got the battery compartment right here and or battery holder. So I've still got the 26 fit. 26650 set aside so I don't accidentally short anything out. This connects directly to the lithium polymer battery charger, which is mounted upside down, but you can see the port right there, the mini USB, as well as the charge indicator LED. Now this connects, uh, the output of this connects to the power switch right here. And that power switch um, switches the connection of the battery to the five volt boost converter. Now the output of the five volt boost converter connects directly to the audio amplifier, as well as the power rails on this proto board. So that way we've got plenty of connections for five volt uh, and ground for the LEDs and the um, buttons, as well as the Raspberry Pi, of course. And let's move on. So that covers power. So uh, I touched on audio, um, the, potentiometer is connected directly to the audio amplifier. And we've got the uh, one, this is a mono amplifier. So I've only got one speaker and this connects to the uh, left channel of the Raspberry Pi. One thing to note, uh, a little quirk of the Raspberry Pi, it's a little bit tricky to see. So I've got this um, tip ring ring sleeve uh, breakout. Now the Raspberry Pi uh, obviously has the composite 
um, output on this as well, but it switches the composite and video connections that are generally found. So this one, I actually have it connected to, um, or I have the ground uh, of the amplifier connected to what is labeled um, the video connection on the tip removing sleeve, but that is, in reality, the ground connection. A little bit confusing, not too hard, just swap video and ground on any of the breakouts or cables you might find that have the full tip ring ring sleeve breakout. Just one little quirk. But other than that, this is not too complicated. I've got the uh, GPIO of the Pi connected to the switches, and those are just wired directly via, via um, some female jumper wires, and that's about it. I do have the camera set aside, but I think I'll turn it on first um, without that connected. Oh, I of course do have the um, banana plugs connected to the five volt um, rails and ground, so these will actually be functional. I don't really have a practical use, but I like the idea of having that connection exposed because it's still nice and weird. But just look at that. That is a beauty. So can't put on the seam clamps until we've got the rear plate mounted, but it is way better uh, in person than I thought it would be. And let's go ahead and turn it on. I've, I've already got a um, fresh Raspberry Pi OS install mounted in the, in the Pi, so we should be good to go. Um, fingers crossed that uh, nothing sparks. So let's go ahead and put that there. I've already tested that um, there are no shorts between the five volt and ground uh, connections. So let's just pop that in there. Probably should have checked to make sure the power switch was off. Um, but let's, let's turn that on. Now these light up. These are directly connected to the five volt rail. Good, ah, we got that boot screen, splash screen. Only this top one is connected to GPIO. Oh, so clean. I've used the Raspberry Pi screen in so many projects, but it's just so simple and beautiful. I love it. So we'll let that boot, no sparks, but no major activity yet. No, oh, low power indicator, no. How dare you, lightning bolt? How dare you show up in my project? So it should still boot just fine. I'm not sure why it's consuming that much power. We've got no audio playing, but it should still boot. We'll just let that go. And there we go, we've got that nice backdrop and let me connect a keyboard up to this. And uh, we'll test some things out. So as you can see, I'm pretty happy with this build. It's way more satisfying to use than I thought it would be because ultimately it's just a Raspberry Pi in a cool case. But um, the case just makes it so much more and I think this is gonna be my go-to portable Raspberry Pi development platform. I also feel like it's really important to sling it over my shoulder like a boom box. I just need to figure out something cool to do with these clicky buttons. I don't know, what should I do with them? How should I change my cyber deck? Or better yet, how will you build your own cyber deck? You can of course connect with me at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. And you can find the part files and the build materials for this project. So get out there and make your own cyber deck. That's all I've got for today. I will see you guys in cyberspace.